Mark McCormick of TD remains bearish on the US dollar. Here's the quote from him. The clear shift is in the direction of a better global growth engine. We pushed back on the dollar rally in October, underscoring that the US exceptionalism theme was waning. Global growth, not just the US, is improving, creating tailwinds for global equities, a weaker dollar, and outperformance of cyclical assets. Mark McCormick is with us now for more. Mark, let's get into it. Regime change. That's what you think. Absolutely. Walk us through what's changed. So in the context of the FX market, there's been a dramatic regime change. We went from two years of focusing on a couple factors that relate to all the things that are happening around the world. We had carry outperform, which we had countries in emerging markets that have higher yields. Those currencies outperformed, which was quite interesting in itself because this came through a Fed tightening cycle. The other side of it was in terms of trade, which is commodity momentum. So what we've been dealing with for two years in FX was G10 inflation, which was a dollar trade. Uh, carry, which was a dollar trade in G10, and then terms of trade, which was generally more global. So I think what we've seen in the last six months since the bear steepening of the U.S. curve and the breaking of risk appetite through the summer, what we've seen is markets are now shifting a little bit more towards risk. But what I think what we're seeing is the regime is changing. We don't know what's on the other side. Uh, there's so many conversations we have with clients is, is the world going into recession? Are we going to have high inflation? Or are we going to see disinflation? So what we're seeing now in what I think is really interesting is that G10 itself in the world is pivoting more towards growth. We're carrying, I, what we see in our models is less focus on inflation. So if inflation's going up, you don't want to buy the currency anymore. What we're seeing is that growth is being upgraded largely because what the market cares about has changed in the last six months. Well, let's get to the menu in G10. We'll go through some numbers. So sterling, 126, the euro, 108, dollar yen, 150-ish. Yes. Where do you want to play this story? Through what? Yeah, so I think you want to play through a mix of G10 and emerging markets. And that's what's interesting about FX, because what we're seeing is now in the way that we analyze the markets, we're seeing G10 and emerging markets participating at the same time to basically collaborate against the dollar. So if you think about what's high quality in emerging markets, you've got India, you've got Mexico, you've got Brazil, you've got Colombia. So you've got the carry story um, and you've got some high quality growth story. But I think India is the, the key thing you want to be looking at. Another thing that we really like is Korea. Korea is correlated to the global growth story, which this is where I think everyone's been wrong. Everyone's been focused only on U.S. exceptionalism. But if you look at leading indicators, nowcast, data surprises, data trends, all these things in Europe and in Asia, everything is participating at the same time. So last year we went through a wave of U.S. looks great, China and Europe are underperforming. At one point, China and Europe look great, the U.S. is underperforming. What we're seeing for the first time is all three regions are firing in the same direction. And that is positive for global growth dynamics, it's positive for equities. So that's good for sterling, it's good for euro. I don't think euro is the, the best way to trade this. And the yen is also more of a BOJ feature. So the way that we like playing the G10 is you're selling the Swiss versus the yen. Because the SMB is done, BOJ is ready to go. I think there's market spending way too much time listening to what the BOJ says because they are never going to spin food you. They are always going to surprise. And we have the wage negotiations coming up. And then following that, we have a BOJ meeting, which to me is very, very live.